Now we're going to look at what happens when our rational power has a negative on it. So suppose I have x to the minus m over n. And remember, we don't like negative powers. A negative power means it becomes a fraction with a positive power on bottom and a 1 on top. Likewise, if I have 1 over a negative power, then that negative says, oh, I go to the top. And it's over 1, which we don't need to write. So if I see a negative power, just change which side of the fraction bar it's on, and you'll be good to go. For example, suppose that we have 64 to the minus 1 half power. Well, this negative means that it's really in the wrong place, and this becomes 1 over 64 to the 1 half. Then we remember that 1 half is a square root. This is the same as 1 over the square root of 64, which is 1 over 8. So now I've answered my problem. Well, let's suppose I have negative 16 to the minus 5 over 4. In this case, we take this to be 1 over negative 16th to the 5 fourths, or 1 over the fourth root of minus 16 to the fifth. And here's where our problem comes in. Notice we have five negatives underneath an even root. And if I have an even root and a negative number, then this is not a real number, and we're done with the problem. It's not even worth going any farther. Well, contrast that with minus 625 raised to the minus 3 fourths power. In this case, the power only sees the 625. The negative stays on top. And this then becomes minus 1 over the fourth root of 625. And I'm going to cube that after I apply the fourth root. 625 is 5 and 125, which is 5 and 25, which is 5 and 5. Four fives, looking for four of them, means I get minus 1 over 5 cubed, or minus 1 over 125. So if the negative is outside parentheses on an even root, it's okay. If it's inside, then we jump right to the not a real number.